All right, so we have parts to a Swift cart system over here on the floor. Uh, typically how it ships is uh, in these couple of pieces. I'll set it up for you guys and uh, hopefully you'll uh, find the video a little bit useful on how to set it up and how to actually run it. So the cart comes in uh, disassembled state. So easiest is actually pull it out. Make sure that when you pull it out, it locks fully. Uh, the wheels are easy to assemble. There's not much to it. It's just slide into their uh, places and close the gray latches that should be open. So two wheels here and then the front swivel part is relatively easy. Just push in and that's it. Uh, that's it for the cart. There is not much else uh, that needs to be done to it. Uh, next what we need to do is open up the little clamps that are on the cart and uh, secure the tripod. Now the tripod is uh, just a regular tripod, nothing really fancy about it, but I marked the front facing leg that should be on the front of where the swivel uh, wheel is with a sticker. Our sticker on here because it is necessary to know which way is the front uh, for the purposes of actually mounting the scanner. So let me extend, typically I extend to the max the center sections of the tripod and then again this leg facing whichever way the actual swivel uh, wheel front of the cart is. That's where I will be resting this leg in. So uh, I will rest it into each one of these little retainer brackets. There we go. And obviously I'll lock it in. There we go. Locked in, locked in, locked in. Now this is seemingly finished and it is relatively sturdy because I can actually lift the whole thing up so I know it's, this is good. But in order to actually finish the mounting of the hardware, what you have to do is you have to undo the bottom little nut that's on the center post of the tripod and you will see this 3D printed scan plan mount and this mount is actually keyed so it only goes onto the tripod in a certain way, hence why I said that this leg needs to be foot forward. That groove that allows you to actually put the tripod or this bracket on properly is supposed to be this way. So the actual bracket faces forward. So where the swivel wheel of the cart is, that's where this is facing. Now I can go ahead and actually replace the nut. The height of this bracket does not really matter, so I mean, the height of this thing is relatively relevant. Okay, so this is now tight. So as far as the cart, this is already uh, assembled. So next, What I will do is now um, we'll go ahead and actually mount the scanner, mount the tripod, uh, the, well the tripod's already mounted, the scanner and I mean the scan plan onto the tripod and hook up the electronics. So first thing that I usually pull out is the scan plan. Cases are very similar but this does say scan plan on it. So hold on. Scan plan, battery, if it's not in there, obviously just goes into the scan plan. There are no other pieces that you really need to attach to it, so battery inserted, little battery compartment bracket installed, and just power on. So this is powering on, and it really just sits in that bracket that we just mounted to the center post of the tripod. And it's 3D printed, so hopefully it sits where it actually needs to be. 
Uh, I'll close the cat case here. And next, we'll pull out the, the, the Swift enabled scanner, focus scanner over here. Scanner is pulled out from the case. Make sure that the battery is inserted, obviously. So, battery's in there. And we have an SD card in the battery compartment also. And I might as well just power it on. So, if the battery is fully charged, we should have the scanner powering on now, too. So, everything's powering on. And now, for the sake of the video, I will be recording my keystrokes and what I'm doing on the controller, but the controller is, well, in this case, a provided phone, but it, you can use your own phone. It doesn't matter what phone you're actually using, but this happens to be a phone that uh, most of our customers actually end up with because it is um, just included in the set up unless you intentionally just say no we are going to use our own phones. The cart itself has a little slot right here where you can slide the phone into it's not going to fall out and this is what you use as a uh, user interface and visually verify that everything's actually working. But because uh, this video is going to show you all the keystrokes it would be hard for me to do it on the phone so I will be doing it all on a computer. Just think about the fact that exactly the same steps that I do on the computer are exactly the same steps that you would do on the phone. There's no difference. There's no app involved. This is all uh, web browser driven. So phone is on here, but I might not be using it. So what I'm about to do now is I will actually uh, search for any available wireless networks, right? So, on the computer or on the phone, you pull up your user interface or your Wi-Fi available or Wi-Fi search bar, and anytime you're using a scan plan, Swift, uh, with a scanner, the scan plan itself outputs a Wi-Fi signal. So you should see a Wi-Fi network. The Wi-Fi network is called SP something, and that's the serial number of the scanner. So I have an SP, 0 to 0 P and then the actual serial number over here. So I know this is it. If you don't have the password for it, I happen to have the password for it already, I think. Oh, it actually does ask me. So the password to uh, join the network is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So numbers from 0 all the way through now. Hit the next button. Uh, we want to connect, associate everything with this network and don't be alarmed. It is searching for an internet connection. The scan plan isn't connected to the internet, so it's never going to actually finish that. But as far as the controller is concerned, and the controller being my computer or the phone, uh, we are now connected to the scan plan, and you can verify that just by looking at this. It says no internet, but it says secure, right? So we are definitely connected to the scan plan. For the Swift card to operate, you need to also connect the scanner itself, which sits on the tripod, to the same network. So the requirement for that is, uh, let me bring this a little bit closer. I will be going into the manage screen on the actual scanner and under the general settings, verify that under WLAN, which is wireless LAN, it is displaying uh, my network name being the SP020 and whatever else is uh, beyond there as my network connection. My network right now is actually off. So what I'll do is I'll turn it on. I have the network um, name displayed prominently. It now says connected and I actually see my IP address. And why I mention this is this is important because I see what IP address the scanner that we're, we have on the tripod uh, grabbed 
from the scan plan as an address. So this is the IP address 192.168.100.119. It's displayed right here. You have to make a note about what those values are. They will be different depending on how many times you connect and what serial number you have. So this does change that IP address and finding it is important. So once it's connected, I can just go home as far as the home home screen on the scanner. Uh, and on the phone, or in my case, the laptop, what I'll do is I will actually pull up Edge, Microsoft Edge, or your preferred browser, it doesn't really matter. And up over here in the address bar, you will type in the address that we just saw. So 168, 100, 119, hit enter. And it reprojects the same screen that you have on the scanner on your phone that's sitting in front of you if you did it through here. So if I go here and I hit the same enter button, so the phone actually has the same screen that I'm uh, recording on my laptop also. But that screen uh, tells me that I'm connected successfully through the scan plan to the actual scanner. Now, in order to start a swift scan, uh, you're, there's three modes on the scanner and you, they're kind of distinguished by, you see the little tabs over here. The middle tab is single scan mode. The left tab, if you move over, is on-site registration mode. But swift scanning is done by the very far tab and it actually says swift. So you'll see that it's synchronizing now the time between the scan plan and the actual scanner. This takes, sometimes it's a matter of a couple of seconds, sometimes it may take up to a minute. So don't be put off by the fact that it synchronizes the time. But now we're in the swift scan mode. Up to you to go into manage now and actually give your project a name. So I'll say, I'll make this a swift video. Swift video and I like to also rename my scan file names. There we go. And I see I misspelled over here. I missed a T here, but there we go. Swift video. And I typically also like to start with scan number one, but that's it. So now I can hit home. Home takes me back to the start scanning screen, of course. But what is important over here is consider what kind of settings you want to inherit if you're going to do a stationary scan. So in my case, this is a really small room and I may just select my uh, indoor profile, the uh, up to 10 meter profile over here. I'll just leave it. You can tweak these as you go, uh, but I would start before I start moving with the scanner. So these are the right settings. You can go through all the other settings if you want to, but I will not for the sake of the video. And now we're ready to actually start scanning. So important thing is everything's on. Um, you're facing in the general direction where you want to actually take off from and we'll hit the little start button. And what start will do is it'll alert you first of all to what's going on. So it actually says, do not move or touch the actual scanner at this point, right? So we are looking at the scanner initiating its uh, mobile scanning. It's doing its initial first anchor scan or uh, uh, measuring how level it is. You will see that the mirror will start spinning and you will also see an outline in the background over here, you can already see an outline of a room. That's because the scan plan is measuring the space that it's already in. The scanner is now moving and spinning. The anchor scan is finished and it says you're free to actually start moving the cart. So I'm going to start moving and I'm, while I'm connected to my phone over here, I'm also connected to the computer just for the sake of the video. Again, if you're doing this in a real space, you wouldn't have two things connected at the same time, but you'd be watching the cart and your progress on the phone itself. Once you get to a point where you want to create an actual stationary scan, this is where on the phone, you press the button that says stationary. 
And what happens over there is the quick scan will stop, it'll power down the following off uh, the Swift cart with the scan plan, it'll do a full 360 scan at that point, and once it's done with the full 360 scan, it'll continue with the uh, Swift scanning again. And this is a relatively seamless uh, process. Now that the scan is finished, you'll notice that the scanner transfers the data to the, uh, from the Swift uh, scanner back to the scanner. It says uh, you're free to start moving again because it is now functioning as a moving scanning a scanner again. We didn't do anything; we just waited for the prompts to tell, uh, say that we can actually start moving, and we're moving. So once again, you'll see that it's tracking us. Now, if you move too quickly, it will warn you that you have to slow down a little bit. And I urge you to obviously heed that advice. But otherwise, if you're moving in this very slow fashion like I am, it shouldn't have a, a very big problem uh, keeping track with you. Once you're finished, I recommend possibly do an anchor scan. Anchor scan does allow you to just tell the scanner that it's not moving and it will just uh, create a, essentially a waypoint in the trajectory knowing that hey you didn't move. Once you're done it once again goes away and you can carry on scanning but because I'm finished I'll hit finalize and finalizing and once again I must stress that you would be doing everything through the phone over here it's just for the sake of the video I'm doing that computer but it's now connected uh, to all devices understands that the scans are finished and you will see once the scans are finished it shows you we only had one moving then a stationary and another moving uh, scan that's what's shown in this this report over here um, if you start another scan it will be separated and you will see that there will be 002 in the actual file name over here but the mobile stationary and the mobile parts will uh, inherit their own little naming nomenclature but that is it for scanning. Um, key points here are you have to connect to the same Wi-Fi network that the scan plan device is outputting. The password to the scan plan Wi-Fi is zero all the way to uh, the digit nine. So all the numbers zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, that is the same password that you have to input on your scanner to connect to the scan plan if it's not already input. You use that same password to connect your phone or your laptop to the scan plan. And then once you're connected to the scan plan, you have to view in the user interface, and I'll do it through a computer just so that it's visible how. If you do it on the scanner, you go into the general settings on the scanner, you go into the WLAN, and the IP address that I'm using for the connection uh, of my phone or my laptop to the scanner through the scan plan um, device is the IP address that's shown here. And this IP address I can show right now because I'm connected to it, but before I'm connected to it, the only way to find out what the IP address is, you by you going into, just like I did, the general settings, uh, manage general settings, and then the WLAN screen over here. All right? Uh, hopefully this was a helpful video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below.